I'm about to discuss Stephen A and how he's trying to walk back some things that he said because apparently the black community are mad at him. He always got to clear the record whenever he has a conversation about Trump or politics. He says something that ends up getting him, putting him in a bad spot with black America, unfortunately. Welcome back to the Stephen A. Smith Show right here over the digital airwaves of YouTube. Let me move on to some of you annoying asses and just get this out the way. And obviously I'm talking about Donald Trump. I was a guest on Fox News' Sean Hannity show last night to discuss the upcoming election, the trial, and Trump. Some people weren't happy about what I had to say. What did you say, bro? But I got to tell you something. As much as people may have been abhorred by Donald Trump's statement weeks ago, talking about how black folks, he's hearing that black folks find him relatable because what he's going through is similar to what black Americans have gone through. He wasn't lying. He was telling the truth. When you see the law, law enforcement, the court system and everything else being exercised against him, it is something that black folks throughout this nation can relate to with some of our historic, iconic figures. We've seen that happen throughout society. So no matter what race, what ethnicity you may emanate from, we relate to you when you're suffering like that because we know we have. And that's what he articulated. Needless to say, people were in a tizzy over that. Now, every single time he says anything, people are in a tizzy over everything that he says. Whatever a tizzy is. I've never heard anybody use that in a sentence ever in life, ever in black history have I heard somebody say, well, everyone is in a tizzy over that. But he's a classy guy. He's a classy brother. You know what I mean? He's in rooms with people who are just super rich and wealthy and, and, and friends with all of the most famous basketball and football players out there. So he's in rooms where people use words like tizzy. But apparently whenever he is honest about his thoughts on Trump, his friends don't usually like it. And we already know most of his friends are liberals. All right. So let's, I'm about to play the newest video that he came out with. But let me go ahead to the newest one right now because he's actually apologizing to his friends who let him know that they're not very happy with how where he stands. Let's play a little bit of this tizzy first. And why were they in the tizzy over that exactly? Because it's being portrayed and misconstrued that I'm saying that Trump's plight relates to black people. Well, it's easy to take things out of context, which is why I love having my own platform so I can remedy and correct some of the foolhardiness that's put out there. First things first, Sean Hannity asked me the question about Trump gaining traction with the black vote and how whether it's a couple of points or three points or four points that it could end up tilting the election in his favor that's upcoming this November. Yes, he's the presumptive GOP nominee. Yes, he's on trial for a hush money case to a porn star. Yes, he recently lost a civil suit for $454 million, where he had to pay about $175 million or something like that up front, okay? Yes, the man has had four indictments against him, 91 counts against him. Still running, though. Still a presumptive GOP nominee, though. And by the way, as I pointed out, has gained traction and is ahead of the incumbent, President Joe Biden, in at least five polls. Not all of the polls, but at least five polls have Trump ahead. Fortunately for the real people of America, that's the case. Unfortunately, that's happening because people are waking up. We have been teaching people how to grow online. It's been absolutely amazing. We have three people who have been able to reach monetization in less than 30 days. Growing YouTube channels, some from zero people. We have one guy who had two subscribers before he started working with me. He started helping him. His views went up 4.8 million percent. We're super excited. If anybody ever want to grow on YouTube, you reach out to me with the word coach. It has nothing to do with those indictments, all of those charges that y'all are trying to all those trumped up charges, no pun intended, that they're trying to put up against him so that he's not qualified to run, which he 
Stephen A. actually wished that was the case because he's left wing. He's come on. He's he's a liberal through and through. You know, he's he's from the old school vote blue no matter who years of black people vote blue no matter who. And guys, Stephen A. and anybody else who's a friend of Stephen A. or a fan of his, you need to understand this. Just because 90 percent of black people vote Democrat does not make Democrat the party for black people at all. They don't serve the interests of the black community. They do not. All right. So the way he's phrasing this and and framing this, he's trying to say, well, although he's a criminal, although Trump's a criminal and he's committed all these heinous crimes for some strange reason, he's still leading in the polls. Well, the strange reason is this. It's called common sense. People are starting to look it up themselves. People are starting to be more objective with where they receive their information, because at first we were one sided. We're only going to get it from MSNBC. CNN or celebrities. And we already know where most of the celebrities lie. They, they lean on the side that supports their pocketbook, period. And then they don't give a about not only the black community, but America as a whole, as long as they're getting their pockets fat. Understand that. And that same thing that goes for a lot of Stephen A's friends and family members. Now, before I go a bit further, getting into us, us as black people, because we know how we can be now, okay? Not all, not some of us, but I'm just talking about some of us from our community. We know how the hell we can be. We're going to have that conversation in just a second. But before I get to that, I love how y'all pick apart me on Hannity. I was on Cuomo on News Nation an hour earlier. I ain't hear nothing about that. I was on MSNBC at least twice over the last month. I ain't hear nothing about that. I was on CNN. Abby Phillips, Laura Coates, several times. I ain't hear nothing about that. Okay? Oh, Stephen A., a uh, uh, contributor to Fox. I'm no contributor to Fox News. I show up on all the networks. I was on Real Time with Bill Maher on HBO. I'm sorry, I ain't hear, I ain't hear nothing about that. I've repeatedly said, I think Trump will cause civil war in this country. I, I can't vote for the brother. Y- y- y'all just going to ignore that. Yeah, they should ignore it because that was stupid. <laughs> It was just dumb. But since you're saying something that you believe your base should celebrate, he's saying, oh, y'all just going to ignore when I said that part. When I said the part that 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 should, you know, let me be on y'all side and y'all not going to, you know, fuss at me about it, then y'all didn't celebrate that. When I was on MSNBC and CNN and all these other places that y'all call friendly fire, where they're not going to ask any real questions, where I'm not going to piss anybody off because I'm going to say exactly what they want me to say. Y'all ain't had nothing to say about that. Why should they say anything about that, Stephen A? Nobody's going to say anything. When you're doing the status quo and you're reading the script that most liberals are told to read, they're not going to say anything about that. But when you go off script and you speak from your heart and just a little bit of common sense, yeah, they're going to have something to say about it. You are not supposed to go, if you're a liberal, you're not supposed to go on no Fox or you're not supposed to go on no right-leaning syndication at all. You're not supposed to. You're not even supposed to look at it. That's why they're saying everything conservative is bad. Everything GOP is bad. Don't look over there. They're just going to lie. They're racist. So when you decide to be objective and go and have a conversation with somebody like a man, now you're up here explaining yourself. Now you're up here saying, well, I was I, w- I was still trying to say everything y'all told me to say, boss. I was still dancing. I was still doing what I was supposed to do. I was still saying that he was racist. I was still saying that there will be a civil war if he's... Come on, bro. Now, on this new video, here he is explaining himself to the same individuals who are fair-weather supporters of his. They're fair-weather supporters, bro. They don't care about you. They just want you to further their agenda. And if you do not, they're going to spank your tail and have you on these videos apologizing over and over and over and over and over and over again. I wanted to touch on something that I made news about just a few days ago. Let me say this, ladies and gentlemen. It's something I say quite often. I certainly never hesitate to hold folks accountable when mistakes or mishaps occur. So I'm certainly not about to run from it myself. I'm fully aware that I've been in the news over the last few days, paraded all over social media as well, 
after comments I made during my appearance on Fox News' Hannity last week with the one and only Sean Hannity himself. And I'm fully aware of the outcry that has ensued because of it. A lot of folks in black America seem pretty pissed at me right now, from friends and loved ones to colleagues, contemporaries, and dare I say, even the NAACP itself. It's not, it's not black America, man. It's black liberals. It's black Democrats. Just say that. Black America is not upset with you. Hey, Stephen A. I'm black. I'm not upset with you. Regardless of the stuff you say, you have a you you have your own people to answer to. It is what it is. That's what this whole video is about. I'm part of Black America. I'm not upset with you. You're specifically talking about Black Democrats who are sensitive as hell and cannot fathom that a man can be objective and have his own opinions. Ain't that something? Why would you even want to be a part of a tribe like that where you cannot have independent thought? You have to be a monolith. You have to move and groove exactly the way they do. You cannot accept certain conversations. You got to be like Roland Martin. Where Roland Martin said, I'm not going to talk to no Patrick Bet David. He tried to set me up with a conversation with, with, um, with, with this person and that person. No, I'm good and well, I'm not going to have a conversation. I'm not going there. I'm going to cancel that. That's what y'all like to do. Y'all like to cancel people. When Stephen A is saying what y'all want him to say, and he's dancing and he's putting forth that agenda that you want him to put forth, you love him. You love him and don't let anybody who are against what y'all believe and you believe. Stephen A is not y'all mouthpiece, lefties. He's not. But here he is apologizing as if he is. Quite a few folks were put off, if not flat out offended, after my words were interpreted as associating support for Trump from the black community with all the legal issues he's facing. For that, I sincerely apologize. To be clear, my words were misconstrued. I'm stating right here for the record that my words were taken out of context. Your words were not taken out of context, bro. It wasn't. You were extremely clear in what you said, all right? You don't believe that because of all that black people have gone through, regardless of what Trump is going through right now, he's nowhere near going through what black people have gone through. That's what you said. You said that. You got to be, if you get offended by that, by you saying that, hey, then that's their business. And you, having to, you have the right to have your opinion. Right. But you also said that Trump is kicking Joe Biden's tailbone. You ain't got, you ain't got to apologize for that. Misrepresenting and depicting me in a way I found every bit as insulting and disrespectful as folks in black America evidently felt about what they thought I said. But I'll own it anyway. Because, you know, please know that I know the buck stops with me. Regardless of whatever interpretation that accompanies any words coming out of my mouth, the responsibility ultimately lies with me first and foremost before anybody else. I've always felt that way. I still do. I always will, period. Blacks who refuse to support Trump are aware of his history of issues. And we'll never forget how Trump claimed Obama, the nation's first black president, wasn't even qualified to hold office because he was born in Kenya. Okay, I don't even know how that's racist. I don't get how that's racist. In order to be the president of the United States of America, you have to check off a few boxes, right? If Trump is receiving information that tells him that the Democratic nominee, who just so happened to be black-ish, okay? If you're looking at the one drop rule, he's black, okay? But just know that that's, that's, a slavery, that's a slavery rule right there. The one drop rule, that's a slavery rule. If you haven't seen my video where Officer Tatum was just crushing some lady who just wanted to throw that in his face, and it just so happened to be a white lady, a white liberal, tried to throw that in his face because he said, my children are, have a black dad and a white mom, but my children are mixed. They're not black. 
But apparently that's racist to say. Because if you look at all of the people who are I'm black and I'm proud and our blood is stronger than your blood and our genes are stronger than your genes and our skin is stronger than your skin and we are the dominant race and all this other stuff. That's part of the problem, first of all. But if anybody else's race speaks like that, we will call them racist. But unfortunately, that doesn't work for us. And yes, I said unfortunately, because it's not fair. It's BS. It makes us weaker. It puts us in a position where we feel like it's okay to complain all the time, to have something to lean on, to have a crutch to lean on, because we we need to feel like we are victims, and we are not, all right? Okay? But if Trump had that information, he had to put that out there. It's like, oh, and guess what? Hold on, bring it in a little closer. Guess who was the first person that introduced that birtherism information that they're trying to put on Trump? It was Hillary Clinton when she was running up against Trump. And Trump used that information when Hillary Clinton put it out there. Hillary Clinton was the one that was running with that information. I'm sorry, let's continue. Although Trump recanted the statement during his 2016 campaign run for the presidency, Yet Trump's dissenters were not the topic of discussion when I was talking to Hannity. The support he appears to be receiving in the polls was what was being discussed. Five polls, count them, five. Emerson, NBC News, Daily Goss, uh, Goss, New York Times, and Rasmussen, all big national polls had Trump leading over the last few weeks. Plus, according to 538, Recent local polls also put Trump ahead in battleground states. He's up six points in Michigan, Arizona, and Georgia each. Insofar as Trump gaining support in the black community, well, how about various publications with these headlines? The Chicago Tribune. This time, Trump really does seem to be making black voter inroads. Why? Now, they say why. You see, that was the Chicago Tribune right there. That was the Chicago Tribune. They said, why is Trump able to make inroads with the black community? It's because there's a lot more black people who are bringing the truth to the black community, like myself, like black conservative perspective, like righteous perspective, like Officer Tatum, like Candace, like chat with me, Linda B., like Celeste Duffy. There's a bunch of black individuals out there who are sharing this information. Just in case y'all haven't noticed, but there's an, there's an abundant amount, there's an abundance of, 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 of black political reaction channels out there now. A whole bunch of them. A boatload of them. And their information is getting out there to the black community. It's falling in their algorithms. They're starting to see other people who are not white, who are not dressed up in a suit with no mustache, holding an American flag. They're seeing people who look just like them, regular day-to-day people who once was voting blue no matter who, and they're sharing a different perspective. And these individuals are listening objectively and they're not just they're not just taking it for whatever's being said. They're going out there doing their due diligence. They're proving to themselves that this that this new path is worth walking down. That's it. That's it. It's really that dang on simple. Post voters of color are shifting right. Are Democrats doomed? How about the New York Times? As black voters drift to Trump, Biden's allies say they have work to do. Axios wrote. Big Biden bummer. New York Times Siena poll shows gaps with key demographic groups. Wall Street Journal. Biden loses support among black men. The Hill. Biden losing support among black voters in swing states. Colon. Survey. Al Jazeera. Why are black voters backing Donald Trump in record numbers? Because black voters are starting to hear and see the truth. And you guess what? Guess what? It's not even about what Trump has done for the black community. It's not even about that. Honestly, 
We are comparing the two men for who they are. Comparing the man, Trump, to the man, Joe Biden. And guess what? It's not even close. It's not even close, man. Just by comparing the men, just, just the men, what do they stand for? Ever since they've been on our radar, what do they stand for? Not even going to talk about what Trump did while he was in office. We know what he did while he was in office, but we're not even going to discuss that. What do the men themselves, without being in office as president, stand for? And then after we get that information, we look at them as presidents. One from 2016 to 2020, and one from 2020 to now. And we see what has happened with this country, what has happened to everybody, not only black people. Who cares a d- about just one race of people? No. If, if you only care about one race of people, then you are part of the problem. I'll let you know that right now. You're part of the problem. But we're starting to look at the actual country and what these men did while they were in office. Huh? And it's not even close. So Stephen A is showing all of these different polls, all of these different networks and, and papers and social media platforms, media platforms, that's putting out that same information. They're saying exactly what Stephen A said, that black people are starting to wake TF up. Yeah, I'll go ahead and figure out what TF mean whenever you get a moment. I'm not about to explain it. And CBS News, black voter support for Trump up from 4% to 23% poll fines. Why did I say all of that? Because I want to show you, I didn't just open my mouth. I read, I listened, and I've seen a momentum shift, as we all have. Anywhere I appear, no matter my subjectivity relating to what I feel, is still going to be based on facts being presented into the stratosphere. That is who I've always been. It is what I will always continue to be. But it's never exercised with malice in my heart and soul. Brother, I'm gonna let you know right now, your audience can care less. The black people you're talking to can care less. As soon as you have a difference of opinion, you're done. We're canceling him, He's, he's done. Stephen A, he gone already. We lost him. We lost him. Roland, Roland Martin, go call your boy. Go get your boy, Roland. We lost him. He's out. He's out of the, he's out of the circle. Y'all can't kick Stephen A out of the circle. And Stephen A, you need to understand, you cannot be kicked out of the circle. And if you realize that, what's the point of this video? The point of this video is what? To take up for yourself? To say, I apologize. I know I offended you and I hold, I, I stand strong to that. I apologize. I, what I said was misconstrued and taken out of context. It was not. What you said was not misconstrued. What you said was not taken under, um, out of context. What you said landed on the ears of stubborn, entitled as racist individuals who only want to be important, um, who only want themselves to be important and can care less about the rest of the country. That's it. A whole bunch of sheep who don't want to do their own due diligence and find out who is really the best for this country between Joe Biden and Trump. No, they're not looking at that. They're not looking at Joe Biden's record before he decided to run for president. They're not looking at his popularity overall and then comparing it to the numbers when we voted for president. How in the hell did he get more votes than Barack Obama overnight in a matter of hours when he was losing before? People are starting to wake up. You don't need to apologize, Stephen A. You need to stand true to what you believe and continue to be objective about what you learn. Please don't shut your mind and stop learning simply because there are people pushing against that. That's ignorant as hell. If you have any children, you wouldn't ask them to do that. You wouldn't say, well, son or daughter, if you offend somebody, even if you're right, even if you're truthful, even if you meant well, you need to apologize. No, you don't tuck your tail if you're true, if you're telling the truth. I learned that. I had to do that. I did that on my channel before. 
But Stephen A., you're far past me when it comes to levels of professionalism and successes and whatnot. You've done some amazing things. Stand on it. All right? Pause. No ditty. Continue to do your thing, man. All right? Continue to do your thing. If you like Trump, just say you like Trump. If you prefer Trump, just say it. I'm not, I'm not, matter of fact, I will celebrate you for saying it. I will celebrate you for saying it. But nope, all of your friends dictate, like you want to go to the parties. You want to be, you want to be involved. You want to be, you know, shoulder to shoulder with people while you're um, sitting courtside watching the playoffs. I get it. You're in those rooms that I might not ever, 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 ever be in. Well, honestly, I don't want to be in, but you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's a beautiful thing. You worked your tail off for it. Stand on your, your convictions, bro. Or as the youngins say, stand on business. Y'all let me know whatever y'all want me to know in the comments below. If you have yet to hit that subscribe button, please make sure you do so on your way out the door. Once again, guys, I'm Van, and now we are all the LFR family. I look forward to seeing you on the next video, hopefully inside of the Patreon as well. Y'all have been amazing per usual. Love y'all. Peace out.